everybody this is the day that the Lord hath made we will rejoice and be glad in it welcome to the cyber sanctuary of kingdom life ministries listen a place where strangers don't need to feel strange where everybody somebody Jesus Christ is Lord and guess what there's a place for you in the kingdom I'm so excited to be together with my brothers and sisters from all over the world to declare the sound that Jesus is Lord over all and everything. Join me in the sanctuary as we engage in the time of praise and worship. Get ready. You know what to do. I, by now, you should know the drill. Get that shower. You've already taken that shower. Comb that hair down if you want to or keep that bonnet on. I'm not going to bother you about it. Make sure that you create a distance or rather a space for you to praise. That's right. Create a praise zone. Create a space for your praise. And let's praise God together because he's worthy of our praise. Come on. Praise the Lord, kingdom life. Come on, praise the Lord, kingdom life. Good morning, good morning, good morning to our online audience. We thank you for joining us and good morning. Let's go to the throne of grace. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this morning. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to worship you. We thank you for this opportunity to give your name praise, give you honor and glory. Father, we thank you for waking us up this morning, oh God. Thank you for clothing us in our right mind, oh God. We thank you for health, strength, life. God, we thank you for all of these things that we sometimes take for granted, oh God. We tell you thank you for it today, oh God. And God, as we go into this worship experience, oh God, let somebody's life be changed, oh God. As we go into this experience, oh God, let somebody uh, be uplifted this morning in the the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that the word, oh God, pricks somebody's heart, oh God. We pray that the word uplifts, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We praise you and we thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 For truly the Lord is worthy. And for truly the Lord is worthy. And we've come to bless his name this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, put them hands together. Wherever you are, in your house, in your car, wherever you may be. Come on, let's put the hands together and bless the Lord. Come on, come on, come on. For he's worthy to be praised. And for that we bless him. So come on. Come on and bless the Lord with me. 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 Come on, somebody, come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord. Now everybody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody say hallelujah. Let everybody say hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hey, come on and clap them hands with me. You can clap. Come on and clap them hands with me. Everybody come on and clap Woo! your hands with me. Come on and clap those hands with me. Clap your hands with me. Now everybody say hallelujah. Oh, 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 oh. Hallelujah. And everybody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on and do. 
dance with me. Come on and do a dance with me. Why don't you say, come on and do a dance with me. Everybody ought to do your dance with me. Do a dance with me. Everybody say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, Say, come on and bless. bless the Lord with me. You want to bless the Lord. Bless the All right, Lord come on. Last me. time, everybody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. We come to give your name the glory. Hallelujah. We come to give your name praise. Hallelujah. We come to give your name glory. Hallelujah. 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 We come to bless his name. Hallelujah. We come to give him glory. And we shout hallelujah. Hallelujah for you're so worthy. For you're so worthy of all of our praise, all of our adoration, and all of our worship. And right now we want our worship to just flow to you, oh God. Let our worship, let the songs of our hearts flow to you, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Let it flow to you. 
said, Lord, this is our prayer. With all we do, Lord, let the river of my word The songs of my heart. Let it rise to bless your name. Let it flow to you. Let my worship. Let your worship flow to him. Let all your worship, let it begin to flow. Let it begin to flow. Father, we worship you in spirit and in truth. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let all my worship, let all my praise flow. Say one voice. Let all my worship. Let all my worship. Let all my praise. Let all my praise. Let it flow to you. Let it flow to you. Come on, you can say it wherever you are. Lord, let all my worship. Let all my worship. And let all my praise. Let all my praise. Let it flow. Let it flow to you. Flow to, to you. Now come on, say, let all my worship, let all my worship, Lord, let every single one of our praises, let, let it flow to, flow to you, let it flow to you. Let all my words Let all my Only you are worthy of all the praise Let all my words Let it flow Let it flow Nobody but you Oh God, we worship you, oh God, not just for what you've done, but just for who you are, just for who you are, just for being a healer, just for being a provider. Lord, we worship you, Lord, we worship you, Lord, we worship you, Lord, we worship you, Lord, we worship you. Now come on, everybody sing, let all my worship, let all my worship. Let all my praise, let it flow to you, let it flow to you, Lord. Everybody say, let all my worship, let all my worship, Lord, let all of our praise, let it flow to you, let it flow to you. Let all my worship, let all my worship, let all of 
of the one who is worthy of it. And I say hallelujah. When you say hallelujah, you ain't talking to nobody else. Yes, Lord. When you lift your hands and extol the virtues of God, you're not talking to anybody else. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. No one deserves your worship. He told Israel when Moses received the law on the Mount Sinai, he said to him that them he said to Moses, he says, I'm a jealous God, and thou shalt have no other God before me. If he is your God, and he's the only living God, lift your hands right where you are, in your home and in your car. Now, if you're driving, unless you're at a red light or if you stop, don't you dare lift your hands. But lift your voice. And everybody, let's let our worship at one time. Even in this virtual space, flow into the heavens. Come on, let the angels be jealous over the sound of the redeemed. But there is a sound that the redeemed make that the angels cannot even make. I'm blessed and I'm redeemed today. Father, we honor you. We honor you, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise your name, Lord. And we honor you and we bless you. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Listen, I'm blessed to be here today. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad I'm here in Jesus' name. Pastor Marvin Winans wrote a song said, Millions didn't make it, but I am one of the ones who did. Yes, Lord. And here we are. This is certainly not to and be insensitive to anybody who is passed on or any families that's got to deal with the loss of anybody through this dreaded COVID-19. But in the midst of this pandemic, and we happen to live in one of the, I think it's the number three state in the whole union of most cases and a hot spot as they call it. God has somehow put a force field around his people. Somehow, the word of the Lord is being enacted in your life. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh. And even if it comes, it won't stay. Woo! A lot of talk is, a lot of talk is given about the cases of people who are positive. A lot of attention is given to those who are tested positive for COVID-19. A lot of attention has been given to those who have even passed from COVID-19. But I want to thank God. I want to take a moment and thank God for those who were positive, but God healed them. Yes. 
Hallelujah. The Bible says they overcome him by the word of their testimony and by the blood of the lamb. Yes. And if you're not careful, the enemy will make you only focus on one side right. of this coin. Yes. But the reality is God is healing. Yes. God is delivering. Yes. God is raising back up. God is restoring people. And we praise him for his restorative power. And so in this opportunity to give, I want you to give as unto the Lord right now. I want to thank all of you for your continued support and your continued, continued financial sacrifice that you are making. And more importantly, I want to thank you for continuing to obey God in the middle of all this going on. David said, I was young and now I'm old and I have never seen the righteous forsaken. And in this, in this space, I've got testimonies all around me. And you can type on the screen that you're a witness that in the midst of all of this, he's kept me yes. in the midst of it all. I've come through many hard trials. <laughs> Temptations on every hand. But Jesus kept me. Woo. Satan tried to block me. Hey, yes, Lord. And to place my feet on sinking sand. But Jesus loves it. He was there to answer my call. I don't know all the words, but I do know this. He was there. He was there. Woo! Always. Help me. He me. For he's kept he me, me. Yes. in the midst, in the midst. Oh. of it all. Yes. Woo! Yes. Somebody need to praise him right there. Yes, Lord. You need to type on the screen, in the midst of it all. Yes. Oh, God. In the midst of it all. Yes. In the middle. In the midst of it all. It hasn't changed, but in the midst of it. He kept me. Hey! Hey! Yes, Lord, he kept me. My God, I feel the joy of the Lord. I feel the praise welling up. Somebody ought to just praise him because he kept you. He just kept me. That's what he did. Holler down and look at somebody just holler. Tell me, he kept 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 me. He kept me. He kept me. Woo! He kept me. Well, I don't know nothing else. I know he kept me. He kept me. He kept me. In the midst of it all. In the midst. Woo! My God. In the midst of it all, he kept me. That's, I, I was supposed to just engage you in this moment <laughs> to give. Because even financially, he's kept us. He's kept a roof over your head. My God. Clothes on your back. Some of us, the reality is, we've eaten more now than we've eaten before. We ain't missed a beat on nothing. And before I give the credit to the government, because the government may be your resource, but he is the source. Yes, sir. And even now we're praying, legislations are on the table. Congress is politicizing over people's lives and how they're going to take care of people. But I ran across a scripture the other day that just kind of skipped through my mind. And the scripture says, the king's heart is in the hands of the Lord. And he turns it, whether so, whether way he wants it to go. In other words, stop worrying about Mr. Trump. Please stop worrying and concerning yourself over who's in charge. He that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. So I'm trying to tell you to sow and to save. Be responsible. Sow into the kingdom of God because the kingdom of God is good ground. So as tithers, let's tithe. As givers, let's give. And collectively, let's be responsible to the things of God as we sow. And then I want to, I would be derelict in my duties if I didn't tell you what I really realized prophetically and give you prophetic perspective on where we are. Save. Sow and save. Somebody added to praise too, so that's a good thing too. Sow, save, and praise. But make sure you are saving. Give to God. Give to yourself. Pay your bills. Pay God. Pay you. Pay your bills. Save. 
Why? Because the ant in this season, I keep telling you, the ant in this season is gathering food. Because he knows that there is a season coming where the food is not going to be in abundance. But guess what? That ant ain't going to stop eating. The scripture says in Proverbs, consider the ant. Consider the ant. Gee, the, the Lord said, look at, watch the ant. I, I placed him in nature so that if you watch the principle, it'll work for you. If the ant is smart enough to know that there's a day coming, how much more should we be understanding and responsible? So, Father, I thank you for every giver today. Bless them as they give unto your kingdom and as they give uh, to the, your work. And I pray even now that you would bless every home. You know what's going on in the White House. You know what's going on in government. And I pray even now that you would make a way and continue to make a way for your people everywhere. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. All of the prompts are on the screen for you to give. Uh, of course, so just follow them. And let's bless the Lord as we continue to worship today. Come on, team. Let's bless him a little bit. Hallelujah. We call you Waymaker. Yes. I don't understand how you make the ways that you make. Yes. But we call you Waymaker. Yes. Come on, can we just worship where we're at? Yes. Before the song even starts, can we just worship where we're at? Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you made a 
enough to praise God right there. We don't have to go no further. Say, and we're standing here. Ah. Come on, say. And we're standing here only because you made a way. Come on, lift up a sound right there. Come on, lift up a sound to the way maker. Come on, lift up the sound to the one who keeps making ways out of no ways. Come on, let's release that sound. Release that sound. care really don't know why he sacrificed his life oh but I'm glad so glad he did don't know why he keeps making a way I've given God enough reason to be justified in his punishment but in spite of me in spite of you he keeps blessing so it tells me he must not be through with us yet. So he keeps on making a way. The amazing thing about God's love that is different than human love, it is that the goodness of the Lord leadeth men to repent. He keeps being so good. He blows our mind with his goodness. How can you be so good to somebody so bad? I don't know why, but I'm grateful. Father, we are grateful for this moment. We are grateful for the opportunity to worship together, and we are grateful for the opportunity to sit at your feet and hear what you have to teach us today. So it is my prayer that you would speak to our hearts, Holy Spirit. Give us now that word that will revolutionize our thinking and cause us to move in power and faith in you. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Now touch everywhere. Here, there, and everywhere. Heal, deliver, and set free by the power of the Holy Ghost. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Every glad heart say amen. Give him praise, everybody. Give him praise right where you are. Yes, Lord. Thank you, praise and worship singers, for an amazing segment and a, and a few moments all we have is a few moments and we take full advantage of those few moments and make them count in the name of the Lord I want to call your attention to Job verse 8 Job verse 8 says I look or rather look I go forward and he is not there and backward, but I cannot perceive him. When he works on the left, I cannot behold him, and when he turns to the right, I cannot see him. But he knows the way that I take. And when he has tried me or tested me, I shall come forth as gold. But he knows the way that I take. And when he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. 
I want to talk for the next few moments that the Lord gives us together from the thought, from the title, Trusting God Through Transition. Trusting God Through Transition. Friends, countrymen, as Caesar says, lend me your ear. Trusting God through transition. The substratum of our relationship with God is faith. The foundation of our walk with God must be faith. Faith is the fundamental and first requirement of walking with God. The Bible puts it like this. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must first believe that he is. If you don't settle the issue of him of his isness, then you will never be able to move your relationship with God forward. The basis of our faith is that God is who he says he is. Interesting enough is that when you study the Bible, the Bible begins in the book called Genesis. The book of Genesis is the beginning of Holy Writ. And the first words in the first word in the first verse says, in the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. Now to understand the magnitude of that statement is to understand that in the Hebrew uh, or the Septuagint, or rather the Hebrew, the Hebrew language for Genesis is, in fact, the Bereshit, which is not in the beginning, but at the beginning. So the original text reads, at the beginning, God. It, 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 it imposes to us that God starts humankind at a place where they could understand because anything before Genesis 1 is impossible for us to embrace because from everlasting to everlasting, he's God. And I'm trying to wrap myself, my mind around an idea that God was here before Genesis. But the scripture says, he says, before Abraham was, I am. So when you start at the beginning of human understanding, he was already God. God did not develop his divinity along with man's humanity. God was God. God before man got here. Why is this important to understand and bring this up? Why are you, why are you making such an idea about this, a big idea about this? Well, the reality is this. If you don't come to God first believing that he is, then you will never get the reward of them that diligently seek him if you don't start at the point he is. Years ago, James Cleveland had a song out uh, that said, God is. <laughs> Not God will be, but God is. He, he says to Moses, when Moses says, I need some credentials, I need to know, uh, I need to go in the strength of a name. Who shall I tell Pharaoh sent me? And the Lord spoke and said, you tell Pharaoh, I am that I am sent you. Not I am becoming, or I will be, but I am, the I am. Who is the I am? The I am is whoever you need me to be in the moment. I am bread. 
I am bread when you're hungry. I am water when you're thirsty. I am a way out of no way. I am. I am God. So this I am demands that we trust and know him from the beginning or the genesis of our relationship with him. It requires faith. There was a time in my walk with God, and because of how I was raised, I had an aversion, and I would take it very personal. And because I was limited in my understanding, because of my own upbringing, I would cast dispersion and be very frustrated with people that would suggest that God is not God. And I remember having heated discussions with people who did not believe in God. I remember, I remember uh, being offended by anybody that just says there is no God or uh, I'm not sure whether this God exists or not. I used to be offended until I grew in my walk with God. Hear this because it sounds like an oxymoron. I was offended by someone's disbelief of the validity of God until I grew in my walk with God. Because as I matured and grew in my walk with God, I started understanding how inconceivable this concept of God is without faith. This God is so great and so amazing until if you don't have faith, it's hard to believe. Oh, y'all don't want to talk about this. It's difficult to even process a God that wakes all of us up in the morning. It's, a, it's, in, it, it's, it's very difficult to embrace this God who spoke the worlds into existence. This God that allows the earth to revolve on its own access. And he strategically times it so that while the earth is turning on its access, we are standing upright. Mm. This God is so great until uh, Genesis 1 is really difficult to embrace without faith because this God spoke and said, let there be and there was. And the Bible says that um, he looked at what he had created and, 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 and understood that it was covered with earth and said, let the firmament that are under the waters uh, be divided from the firmament that was above. That's really hard to embrace. Okay, that's a lofty idea. It's hard to embrace how uh, this God heals your body after the doctor walks in and says you have cancer. And after the doctor says you have this in your body and some um, sanctified folk get around and start praying and the doctor that walked in giving you a bad report comes back in and says I know what I saw Tuesday but something has happened. We took another scan and what was on the radar what was on the scan Tuesday is not there on Friday there must be something greater who made the mountains who made the sea <laughs> who made the rivers across you and me who put the moon in the starry sky somebody bigger I don't hear nobody talking to me somebody bigger than you and I let's get a little personal it's got to be a God I don't know I, he really don't make any sense to my finite mind it is, it is a little bit unconceivable it's inconceivable to think but last year I was crying this time Oh, three months ago, I didn't know if I was going to make it, but look at me now. And it ain't because I did something so wonderful. As a matter of fact, I really didn't change much about me. But God somehow turned, picked me up and turned me around and placed my feet on a solid ground. And what I thought was going to kill me 10 years ago, I can look at it and laugh now. If you don't have any faith, it's going to be hard. To know that this God brings you out. So here it is that the basis of our relationship must be faith. And that faith is the ability to trust God under any circumstance. 
purpose. If you don't hear anything else I say today, I want you to get this down in your spirit. Faith is the ability to trust God under any circumstance. And the problem with um, understanding faith and the problem with communicating faith is because faith has been so misinterpreted until we think that we need it. Require. You have faith when you acquire things. And that your faith is based on what you have. And people that don't have a lot of tangible things don't have a lot of faith. But faith is your capacity to trust God when you have nothing. How in the world do you keep walking with God with no money in your pocket? And you start saying stuff like, I know the Lord is going to bring me out. How in the world do you write songs like you made a way when my back was against the wall? It requires faith. You need faith for transitions. Because time is filled with swift transitions. Life is a series of transitions. Lord, I wish I could talk to the right people. Life is a series of changes. It's a series of stages of development. You are one way this way, and a, f a few days later, you have changed. You are one way in this stage of your life, and, and, and then you keep living, and all of a sudden, you are somebody different. You are, you're an infant, then you're a toddler. Ooh. Ooh. Then you are primary, or whatever they call it. Then you are a tween, and you a preteen, and you're adolescence, and you're, you're all of these things, and then you're a young adult, and then you're an adult, and then you're a senior adult, then you're just old and decrepit. I'm, I'm just kidding, but you're just older. And, why, you, you're, and, and, and all it is, you just keep on living, and they just happen. These changes occur. There was a time I could jump up out of the bed. Now I have to think about it. I have to meditate on it. I have to... I have to decide what way I'm going to roll out of the bed. I have to, you don't hear what I'm saying. It, and all I did was just kept living. I just keep living. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't decide when the transition would happen. It just happens because time is filled with swift transitions. The interesting thing about transitions is it is the most ambiguous place you can be. It is transitions, that transitional period of life is hard. It is tough when you are watching yourself going through the changes because the transitions, you know, transitions. When you're somewhere between where you were and where you are going. Transitions. I'm not quite exactly where I was, but I'm not quite exactly where I'm going. I'm in between. It's the in-between stages. It's, it is the stage where you are most unsure of yourself. It is um, what happens to a young man. Uh, I remember because I went through the stage called puberty. You understand? And and y'all won't believe this, but I could sing soprano at some point. And all of a sudden, I start going through the transition. And my voice would start doing things that I had no control over. I was mad. I'd be talking, and I'd say, hi, y'all, hey, doing all in the same sentence. And I was trying to get it out and make it clear and it didn't matter how many times I cleared my throat or drank tea. It didn't matter because I was in transition. And in that transitory stage, you have no control because you know part of you is growing up. And there's another part of you that wants to be the baby. It's, I, used to, I used to work in the middle school and I discovered, um, don't, 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 get, don't get offended when I say this, but my years working in the middle school only, only made me realize that kids who are in middle school uh, are crazy. Mm -hmm. That's the most craziest time of, 
of life because they're not quite babies anymore and they're not quite really adults. And they're in that strange place because they go from, watch this, they go from sitting in one class all day. Now they are changing classes and rooms and life is different, and they want to be independent, and yet at the same time, they don't know where they're going, and they want that shoulder, and they want that security, and at the same time, they want you to let them go all at the same time. Let me go and do my own thing, but don't leave me. At this. It's transition. It's, it's transition. It's transition, and it's scary. And then you go through other transitions. Oh, you graduate high school and you go to college. And that's another transition because at home when you were in high school, you knew you had to get up in the morning and da-da-da-da. And you had parents perhaps that would make you. And all of a sudden you wake up in that first day of your first semester as a freshman. And you are now faced with the reality of the fact that you don't have to get up. Nobody's there to make you go anywhere, and it messes you up because when you realize you have that freedom and you realize I can do what I want to do and I'm not going to be on punishment, now you are struggling to get to an 8 o'clock class. You don't want to talk to me. It is the transitions of life that make us uncertain, and the uncertainty is the this prevailing emotion during transition, it is uncertainty. I'm not sure of myself. I'm not sure of how people see me. I'm not sure if I can manage certain things. I'm not sure because I'm in transition. I don't know what I look like to people. Oh, y'all don't want to talk about this. When you are in transition, you're not sure of how you are perceived by people. You don't know if you look good enough for you. You don't know if you sound like you're making sense. It is uncomfortable. And the emotions that go with transition will destroy you and take you over. And that's why some kids cannot, children cannot handle transition properly. And if they are not, if they are not guided properly, they lose themselves and they, re, they retreat. And some children are, uh, some people are now so introverted and so insecure and they won't speak because Somebody didn't help them manage the transition. You don't hear what I got to say today. They don't, nobody taught them that it's okay to be different. And so now they discovered that they are different. And instead of celebrating their differences, they, reclu they recluse into a place where they fall back and don't even express themselves. I don't even want friends because I'm going through this transition. And nobody told me that I didn't have to look like everybody else. Nobody told me that I didn't have to be like everybody else. And so I don't know what to do in this transition. Who am I talking to today? This, this transition is much like the metamorphosis of a butterfly. It is, it is the same. Life is just like the process of metamorphosis that the butterfly goes through. He's an egg first. It's discovery as an egg as an egg. And then the next stage is a caterpillar. That caterpillar is where you gain knowledge. You see these caterpillars walking or crawling with all these legs and it's it's creepy. It's, 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 you know, some people are uncomfortable with a caterpillar. It can't hurt you, but um, it's a caterpillar. It doesn't look too, you know, doesn't look too good. It's a caterpillar. But that caterpillar is gaining knowledge of his world. When you are in your stage of a caterpillar, you are gaining knowledge of your surroundings. When you are a caterpillar, you are learning where to go and how to climb and where to crawl when you are a caterpillar. And then, right when you learn your surroundings, something happens to the caterpillar that happens to all of us. The caterpillar goes into what we call the chrysalis or the cocoon. Mm. Can I talk to anybody? And the weird thing about the cocoon stage is that I knew I, I'm just getting a handle 
on my life and, 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 and becoming aware of things. And all of a sudden, I get to this place of obscurity. I'm in a place where I don't know exactly where anything is anymore. And it's shaping my mindset because I am hidden. I am, I am hidden. The cocoon is the hiding place. The cocoon is the private place of development. The cocoon, he that dwelleth, I praise you, in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. Yes, Lord. God, when he's about to make you what he wants you to be, he will put you in the cocoon of life. I wish I could talk to somebody right now. I'm telling you right now, some of you are cursing your situation and you're bemoaning your fate and you're not doing well because you don't understand that anytime God puts you in a place of, of isolation, anytime God obstructs your view, anytime God keeps you away from things, anytime God isolates you is because he's preparing you for something that your eyes haven't seen and your ears haven't heard any Anytime God shuts you out and anytime God sometimes changes your circle and anytime you think you're just being lonely but there's a difference between being alone and lonely and if you're not careful you'll miss that there is a blessing in being left alone because when you are left alone God will never leave you to yourself um, he'll never leave you by yourself he'll just leave you to yourself so you can fix yourself and it is in the cocoon of life that he puts us in this place uh, where we can't trust us. I feel the Holy Ghost. You can't trust ourselves. You can't trust what's around us. You have no control over things because if you were in control of your life, you would have worked things out differently. But God, I don't know who I'm preaching to, but God told me to tell somebody, I need you to get comfortable. I need you to understand that God has you in the place of cocoon. Hmm. Uh, and this place, don't despise it. It's a, it's a place where he's processing you. It's the place where he's developing you. It's the place where he's growing you. It's the place where he's coloring you. It's the place where he is teaching you. It's the place where he is strengthening you. Because when the caterpillar comes out of the cocoon, he's no longer a caterpillar. Uh, because a caterpillar has to crawl on the ground, I praise you. A caterpillar uh, is always in constant threat of somebody stepping on it. It is vulnerable uh, to the power of somebody else's foot. But when the caterpillar goes into a cocoon, uh, there is a freedom that comes when he comes out. He is now, she is now a beautiful butterfly with the capacity to fly and get out of the way of harm's reach. Get out of the way of public opinion. When that caterpillar comes out, yes, Lord, I praise you, of the cocoon, you don't have to run with anybody. I don't know who I'm preaching to. You don't need anybody's approval because I've never seen an ugly butterfly. Lord, I praise you. Oh, if you can hang through, I don't know who this is for, but you ought to just type on your screen, hang through the cocoon. Stay in the cocoon long enough because when you come out, you're going to come out with wings. You're going you're gonna to come out with an ability to fly over your circumstances. You're going to come out. You're going to come out, oh, looking better than when you went in. When you're cocoon, in the cocoon, everybody thinks you're ugly. But when you come out, you are a beautiful butterfly. I don't know who I am preaching to today, but God told me to tell you, get ready to fly. Yeah. I'm not talking to the right people. I can see that now. But if you hear what I'm saying to you, type on your screen, yell it in your house. I'm getting ready to fly. I'm getting ready to fly. I'm getting ready. Fly, I'm getting ready to fly. Ah, I'm getting ready to fly. I'm getting ready to fly. I'm getting ready to fly. Has thou not known 
Has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither grows weary, for there is no searching of his understanding, for he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases their strength. Even the youth shall be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their, their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. You're going to run and not be weary and you're going to walk and not faint. Somebody needs to hear what God is telling you today. Get ready to fly. Mm -hmm. Got to endure the transitions so you can get at the stage that God has ordained for your life. Uh, uh, let me go a little further because I got to get to the text and I got to get, I got to get finished with this. I'm not, I'm almost done. I promise you. But I was thinking the other day about my trepidation with flying and, 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 and if I have any, and I discovered as I began to just go back in my mind and I've been flying for years, I've been flying for years and years. And I said, what is it that gives me still a little angst? And I discovered it is turbulence. It is, it is turbulence. It is turbulence that makes me uncomfortable because I get on the plane after being assigned a seat. I purchase the ticket. I get on the plane. I wait in line and I sit down in my seat and I buckle my seat knowing that the pilot has radar devices, knowing that the high-tech equipment is there to keep us from crashing I know all of those things. I know, uh, I know Daquan, that the pilot has been vetted and he is fully prepared and he is fully trained because he would not be sitting in the cockpit had he not been fully trained. I know that. I know that you wouldn't be selling me a seat if there was any threat of danger. But why is it that I am nervous? It is because there is something that goes on in the atmosphere that the pilot can't control. There is something that goes on. Oh, I wish I could talk to the right people. There is something that the stewardess cannot satisfy. There is something that first class seating does not make you comfortable with. It is called turbulence. And I want to ask you a question does anybody know what it is to go through a little turbulence in your life? Yes, it is those things that come up that nobody can help you with. They can hug you and it's still rocky. They can, they can tell you it's going to be all right and you're still afraid. I don't, I don't know if this is making any sense, but it, it, it is still, it is those seasons where things are going so crazy and people can text you and they can give you money and all of those other things, but it does not stop the turbulence. Don't stop it. Man, you're going to be all right. I'm telling you, God's on your side. I appreciate that. I know that's true, but help me get through this turbulence because if you've ever been in a real storm in a plane and that plane hits an air pocket, that thing drops and your soul comes up in your throat. <laughs> if you've never been on a plane, you don't know what I'm talking about. When that plane drops and everything here just comes up, turbulence. It's, it's what Job said, the thing that I feared the most came upon me. What do you do? Because this turbulence and knowing that the plane is equipped to remain in the air does not always calm my fear. I think this is where Job was. Job says, behold, listen to the text, I go forward. He says, behold, I go forward. What do you do when it looks like you're starting to make productive progress with your life, but you don't sense his presence? I'm making progress, but God, where are you? I'm finally 
get my bills straight. But I don't feel the joy. Whew. Maybe you've never been there. Finally get my home straight. But I'm absent of the joy. Finally getting my job situation straight. Everybody else is looking at my life saying, you go, girl. Man, you the man. You rolling, Doc. And inside you're going, I'm glad y'all think so. Whew. You got a promotion. And everybody's congratulating you. And you don't feel nothing. Mm -hmm. I go forward. I thought that when I got here, I'd feel better. I thought when I bought that car, things would look up. I thought I bought that new house. I thought, I thought that this would bring joy to my life. And I'm sitting in a new something with an old sorrow. What do you do when you got something new and you can't Separate from the old pain. Uh, he says, I go backwards and can't perceive what he's doing. So, so now I'm in a conundrum because I'm going forward making progress and I don't sense him. And I even tried to reach back how it used to be. And he don't tell me what he's doing. He don't tell me what he's doing. I figured, I thought if I would just look back, because you know the saints say, just look back, see what he's done for you. And I did that, and I still can't perceive of what's going on. You told me in church, if you ever want to find out what God's doing, just find out what he did. And I look back to how he brought me out before, but I'm sorry, y'all. I'm not as churchy as you. I look back to what he did. And I still don't understand what he's doing. Oh. What is he up to? What is God up to? What are you doing with my life? And if that ain't bad enough to add injury to this insult, I'm in the dark. You don't even put windows in my cocoon. I wish I could talk to the right people. This would be a little easier if I had a little scenery to let me know that I'm moving forward. It would be better if I could just see a little progress. It, God, every now and then, can you let me see something? It gives me hope that I'm on the right track, but you put me in a cocoon with no windows. And um, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know if we. Met, I don't know if the train is moving forward. I don't know. If the, I don't know if the life is moving backwards. I don't know if this relationship. I don't know nothing. I'm just in the dark, and I'm. But I told you from the beginning that if you're going to walk with God, you got to walk with him by faith because sight will mess you up. You think you want to see what God's doing. Oh, here I come. You think you want to see what God's doing and what he's up to, but the truth is you really don't want to see it because when he is doing the most work on you, it's the ugliest. There's a reason why the anesthesiologist gets paid so much. He is necessary to the process of surgery. And if he doesn't do it right, surgery will not go well. <laughs> because you must go to sleep. He must deaden parts of you. Your conscious awareness must be detached.
from the reality of what you were going through. Because if you forget the pain of the cut, if you saw what they were doing, it would be way too much for you to handle. I don't hear nobody talking to me. Forget the pain. That's why y'all judge me. Uh, I would say something else, but I'm in the pulpit, so just don't judge me. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to get no, you know, no comments like that. But um, if you want to judge me, judge. Yeah, amen. Um, <laughs> but when I go to the dentist, some of y'all are so blessed and so anointed. You are anointed to sit there, have a conversation with the dentist while he's all in your mouth, and you you can hear the drill. He praise God for you. You can hear, and you can he can take that little scaling thing and, and, and dig and all of that. The Lord bless you. But I discovered that there was something called nitrous that sends me to Disney World. And so when I walk in, they know, they know, Mr. James, Disney World, Disney World. And the lady tried to tell me, you know, well, it's a, in a little bit more expensive. I, expensive now, are you sure? I said, mm -mm -mm, don't insult me. I will pay. Whatever's right, I will pay. I don't want to hear the drill. And they're so modern now. They got it up on the screen. They, they in your mouth and you can watch it. I don't want to watch. Send me to go see Mickey <laughs> or wherever I'm going out of here because I don't want to see the process. Sometimes we indict God for keeping the details away from us, but the reality is if we knew the details of what he was doing in our lives and seeing the process, we jump off the table half-stitched. You jump off the table without even the process being finished. In the middle of you just, no, 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 I don't want to, I don't want to go for this. Meanwhile, your heart is half stitched. So he puts you in the dark to develop you. Hmm. He puts you in the dark. Then, then Job says, Job, and you got to understand where Job is. Job has lost his children. He's lost his cattle. He's lost his friends. He's lost, his, he's lost everything that was near and dear to him. And he's in this place, and he's trying to figure out, uh, what do I do in this transition? And he says in the ninth verse, he says, I, I, uh, uh, I look for him on the left hand where he works. And I can't see him. I can't trace what he's doing. I can't, I don't see a pattern of his work anywhere. I look on the left hand. That's where he works. The left hand of God is where he works. And then I don't see him on the, and then he seems to conceal his location from me. Mm. He, he seems to conceal where he is and what he's doing. He don't let me know any of that. And then I have to conclude. And before I come to this conclusion, this is what I want to tell you. You got to be careful not to panic when you have good reason to panic. A couple of things the Lord told me to tell you in this message, and this may be boring to some of you, and I get it, but for somebody that hears my voice, you're going to get this word. It's going to sink in your spirit. you got to be deliberate and make sure that you resist the temptation and the anxiety of panic, even when you have a reason to panic. I want to talk to somebody. I want to stay right there for just a moment. I want you to start fighting against the spirit of worry. I want you right now, the spirit of God will have me tell you to resist pushing the panic button. Stop panicking every time it looks like 
it's going to go awry. Stop allowing that to be your first response because the enemy is counting on how you respond first. He wants you to panic because if he sees panic in you, if he sees fear, he will pounce. He says, I got her. <laughs> the situation ain't so bad. And, and, and really, God's going to bring you out. But I want you to panic because when people panic, they make mistakes. When people panic, they don't move correctly. That's why when we were in school, we used to have fire drills. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. We used to have fire drills, and the reason for the fire drills was in case of a real fire, we would know what stair sets to go down, what stairway to, to exit the classroom, and which way to go, so that there would not be a traffic jam, so that people won't panic. When you go on a cruise, the first activity that is required of the whole, the whole ship is a fire drill. In case of an emergency, you are to go report to muster station number seven. Why? Because if you panic, you might get thrown overboard. If you panic, you might get trampled upon. And the enemy wants you to panic so you can lose your footing and he can pounce. Hmm. Now, number two, listen to this. When you don't know what God is up to, hear this. When you don't know what God is up to, don't assume. want you to hear me. I holler enough, but I want you to get this. When you don't know what's going on, when you don't know what is happening, when you are unsure of what's going on around you, don't assume what it is. The enemy wants you to be filled with assumptions because assumptions are faulty answers. Okay, you got questions and you are now answering your own questions with your own assumptions, which are faulty answers. You don't even know what it is and the enemy wants you to live in a place of assumption. Because when people have assumptions and they are strong in their assumptions, they close down the possibility of better. <laughs> you stop believing you start believing that what you assume it to be is what it's going to be and meanwhile God is saying you don't even know I'm trying to bring you out don't assume when I don't tell you what's happening that I'm not doing anything I've lived long enough with God to discover that when he doesn't tell you anything he is up to something Let me, let me wrap this up. So Job says, I look for on my left. I go backward. I mean, I go forward. I go back. I go look on the left. He ain't there. I don't know where. I can't trace him. On my right hand, nothing. I don't know what's going on. There ain't no windows. I can't see if I'm making any progress. I can't tell none of this. But this is what made me happy. And this is what's going to make you happy. He stands up and says, but he knows the way that I take. Ah! Lord, if I was preaching good. What, what, what does he know? He knows where I am. Lord, I feel like shouting. What are you saying, Job? I don't know where I am in my life. I don't know what's actually going on, but he knows where I am. And I want to tell somebody under the sound of my voice, he knows where you are. 
Did you hear what I said? He knows where you are. He, he knows where you are. He knows. He knows where you are. He knows where you are. He knows your down settings and your uprising. He knows. He knows when this trouble started and he knows when this trouble is going to end. He knows the nights that you cry yourself to sleep and he knows the days that you fight through emotions. He knows the way that I take. He knows when I can't articulate it, when you can't even tell anybody. Some of us, sometimes we've been going through so long, we, when we try to talk to people, people say, come on, tell me, tell me. And you, you, the reality is your frustration is I don't even know what to tell you. And if I tell you, it, it doesn't even make sense to me. And now you want me to make it make sense to you. I, I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on, but he where I am, he knows, he knows those tears that run down your face and join under your chin. And you weren't even thinking about nothing. And out of nowhere, they come. Maybe you've never been there. Maybe you've not walked through anything like that. He knows that when the sun is shining and things are great and all of a sudden a heavy spirit of depression hits you and you are crying and nobody and, and you are glad that nobody's even been able to look in your car but all of a sudden you start crying and you don't know why. You, when everybody else is smiling, you, you are frowning. He knows! I don't even know why I feel like this. It's, it's not menopause. It's not andropause. It's... it's it's, it's not those things. It's, I don't know. I can't get a grip on my emotions. Uh, and maybe if I talked about it a little better, maybe I would feel better. But the reality is I don't even know what to say. I don't even know where to start. I don't even know how to feel. I don't even know why I feel like this. I got money in my pocket and I'm still sad. Because I, I thought if I had money in my pocket, I'd be happier and I got money. I got gas in the car, money in the pocket, and I don't even have the desire and the strength to go anywhere. Ooh. Oh, I wish I could talk. I, I got plenty of friends I could hang out with, and I don't even want to call them to even hang. I don't even, I'm struggling to return texts. Oh, y'all don't want to talk about this. I'm struggling to return phone calls because it's, nobody did anything to me. They, 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 they didn't do nothing to me, but I'm just in this place where I don't know. And I don't want to bleed on everybody, and I don't want to, I don't want everybody, anybody to see where I am. So it's just easier to stay in this cocoon. But he knows the way that I take. I'm, I'm taking way too much time. And after I've been tested through this experience or this transition, after I get through this transition, what's going to happen, Joel? I shall come forth as pure gold. So what's going on in the transition? All of the impurities, all of the junk, when they are, watch this, when they are purifying gold, they put it in a huge container and it is dropped in this place with extreme heat with the junk on it, with the dirt, with the all of the dross as it is called. And they drop it in this huge melting pot and all of the impurities of the gold, all of the dross comes to the top and is filtered off. They take, as it were, a huge strainer, for lack of a better term, and they scrape the top, and the only thing is left is pure gold. Hmm. Maybe the fire that you are experiencing, maybe the extreme heat of your circumstances is God burning off. Could it be that God is burning some people out of your heart? I'm done. Could it be that God is burning some people out of your life? 
Could it be that God is filtering some situations out of you so that you could be left with the purity of who you are? I'm finished. Let me stop talking. Y'all come on. But could it be that God is taking you this way because if you can hang on in there and trust him through the transitions, he knows that he's going to bring you forth you're going to be somebody in something that you never were before. So you got to trust him through the transition. You got to trust him when it doesn't look like he knows what he's doing. You got to trust him. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust you. Yes, Lord. How I prove you oh and war. Yes. Jesus, Jesus. Yeah. Precious Jesus. Yeah. Oh, for grace yes, to trust. Him more. Tis so sweet to trust in yes. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Just to take Him at His word and just to rest upon His promise. Just to know the safe, the Lord. This is my part I love. I'm so glad Woo. Yes. I've learned to trust him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Precious Jesus, Savior, he's my friend. And I know that he is with me. And he promised to be with me till the end Jesus Jesus how I trust you how I prove you I prove you o'er o'er and o'er and o'er and o'er oh Jesus Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, mm. oh, for grace to trust him more, oh, for grace, say it y'all. Even when I don't understand, I need grace. Even when I don't understand what you're doing, I need grace. Oh, oh my, to trust. With tears running down my face, I need grace. Hey, yes, Lord. Even when you don't tell me what you're doing, I need grace. Trust you. Things are not going well, I need grace. Hey. Well, well, well. Trust you more. When things are good, I need grace. So grace. trust you more. To Listen, somebody under the sound of my voice. That's your prayer. I hear you. I hear your heart. I feel you. I pick, I'm picking you up in the spirit. God, this transition is hard. 
I thought this pandemic was going to be over and things were going to be back to normal. I had no idea we'd be in July and hearing reports like things are not going to change until next year. I was okay. I had plans to be sustained through June. But this is July. Okay, the kids were not going to go back to school, but they were going to go back in August. They were going to go back in September. And now, plans have changed. This transition is lasting a little. What do I do, preacher, when the transitions are lasting a little longer? Mm. I'm exhausted. My money's getting low. I'm exhausted. I was okay with being by myself, but now these four walls are closing in on me. I'm, ooh, I need grace. I'm telling you, I'm, but I'm telling you right now, it's going to take faith. Not spooky faith. Not walking around quoting all these things that make you feel like you got faith. But simply sitting and saying to yourself and to the Lord, I'm going to trust you. Okay, Lord. I'm going to trust you. You said you're going to take care of me. All right. I don't want to even feed how I feel. You said you're going to do it? Okay. You haven't changed things. As a matter of fact, it's looking worse, but I trust you. All right. All right, Lord, I'm going to. I'm going to yeah. trust you. I'm gonna, yes, my savings are getting low. I'm gonna, what you said. That's what you yes. said, Lord. Okay, so since you said it, I believe. I need grace just to trust you more. Because I had a time where I thought this was going to be over, and now the time is extended. Yeah. I need grace. Father, in the name of the Lord, somebody under the sound of my voice needs grace to trust you in this transition. Life is changing. It's filled with swift transitions and things are changing every day. And one week I feel this way and another week I feel another way. These are transitions and changes. And I need to trust you. So give me grace to trust you Give us grace to trust you when we can't trace you. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Praise him, everybody. If you don't have him as your Savior and your Lord, do me a favor, put your hand on this, put your hand, uh, emoji on the screen says, I need you, I need the Lord, and I want to be saved. Somebody will minister to you right where, right, right where you are in your home, in your car, wherever you are. The hand of the Lord wants to touch you. And he's going to give you an experience that's going to qualify your faith. I know what I'm talking about. If you want to join this ministry, this is a great place for you to grow your faith. And we'll walk with yes. God. We are all just trying to get it right. That's why we keep yeah. doing it. So come on and connect with us yeah. so you can grow. All right? I'm looking forward to hearing from you right now. That's right. Right now. Go ahead. Click on. Right now. And I promise you, we will respond right away. Lord, Lord bless you today. Listen, let's give God the fish and the loaves, all right? God gave us something, and he is blessing it. He says, I'm going to take the two fish and the five loaves of bread, seven, set up seven items. All he's asking for you and I is to consecrate a dollar a day, one dollar every day. And then that's that time period, which is now, let's give to the Lord seven dollars. Seven dollars. I'm asking all of you to join me in a seven dollar seed. That's right, every week a seven dollar seed above your tithe and your offerings, but a seven dollar seed. Don't give God what's left, give Him what's right. And watch him bless your life like you have never seen it before. Testimonies are already pouring in. Just out of obedience, God is doing this. And I want to challenge you parents to do something. Parents, especially you covenant members, 
of Kingdom Life, I want you to I want to I want you to accept this challenge. I want you to give your child a dollar a day. That's right. Get a shoebox or get get something, get a piggy bank. Back in the day, we had gleaners. Y'all don't know nothing about that. We had quarter gleaners. But I want you to put it in your child's hand because you want your whole house to be household of givers. Because givers are livers. Teach your children how to give. Not just to receive, but to give. Train up a child in the way they should go. And when they're old, they won't depart. When I was a little lad, getting allowance from my daddy. Whatever the allowance was, I had to pay my tithe. If it was $10, he would give me five and ten and five ones and then expect me to fill out an envelope. What was that doing? It was teaching me a principle. So I want you to teach your children. That's right. Give them a dollar a day. Say, this is for the house of God. This is for the work of God. This is for where we're going. We are sowing where we're going. And God's going to bless us. We've got our own brand new facility. I cannot wait for us to get in it. Oh, it's spacious. It's got, it's going to be state of the art. It's going to be amazing. And that same child that you are teaching how to sow is going to have a safe place to come. Play basketball, play games, learn about the Lord, do their homework. I mean, be scholars. I'm t it's going to be amazing. Yes. Careers are going to be developed on the campus yes. of Kingdom Life Ministries. Yes. Yes. So, so where you're going. Thank you for all that you do. Father, thank you and bless everyone under the sound of my voice that will heed these words and give to your cause. In Jesus' name, amen. Look, I'm looking for you. Listen, I'm looking for you Tuesday night. Don't miss it. Tuesday night at 710, we will be here. Same bat channel, uh, same bat station, just not the same bat time. 710 p.m., all right? God bless you. Oh, for grace. Grace, everybody say, oh, oh, grace. Everybody say, oh, oh, oh grace. Oh, oh, my. Grace. Oh, for grace. Oh, oh, grace. Even when I don't understand, I need oh, grace. Oh, well, well, well. Grace.